Now let's make a list of the things that happen in prophase. I do have a visual here for you. Every visual that you look at is going to represent things a little bit differently and they're models of a process, so they're imperfect. In fact, an awesome challenge is to look at pictures and try to figure out where where the image doesn't match um, accurate science uh, because none of it does like you do the best you can with your art um, but it you're always missing some stuff so we're going to use these imperfect images the other thing that I think is really challenging about this is to remember that the whole thing is a cycle. We're still in the cycle. We're still in the cell cycle process. We just zoomed in and we're going to check out what's happening in this stage. Because it's a cycle, where does it stop and where does it end? And it can get really irritating because you have to make a call. You have to decide like, okay, what are the hints that this is in the certain stage? Because the whole thing, it's not like the cell goes, okay, hey, everybody, I'm in prophase now. It's like the cell was in interphase and starts to go into prophase, but a whole bunch of stuff has to happen and that's a process. And you can be in early prophase and you can be in late prophase. And then they made up this new one, prometaphase, which is just late prophase in my brain, but I didn't want to not include it because you will see prometaphase out there and I didn't want you to be like, oh my God, I don't know what prometaphase is. It's just late prophase or I don't think of it as early metaphase. I think metaphase is super clear, but whatever. It's late prophase. All right. You could just look at this and you could go, okay, what are some things that are happening? First and most important, what did I tell you the, the state of the DNA was in during interphase? I'm just going to... Draw it up here. Here's Pictionary. We're playing Pictionary, folks. Loose chromatin. All the DNA was in the form of loose chromatin during interphase. So what, is it still in the form of loose chromatin? Dude, here's an example of like, what, what are those dots? And why are they drawing it like dots instead of a tangle? That was the artist's choice or perhaps the technology's limitations, whatever. I definitely would draw tangle instead. But the chromosomes are condensing. That's probably the most significant and important thing that starts happening in prophase. Chromosomes condense. Oh man, I just said chromosomes. I think that it's better to say the DNA condenses. But because a chromosome is just a strand, ah, oh, it's either loose or tight, it starts getting tight. And they start winding up and they're distinguishable. You can tell them apart. And why do we have, look, what do you notice? Each chromosome has sister chromatids. There's my centromere in the middle. And each one has sister chromatids, which means the identical copy produced during synthesis of interphase, that identical copy is still attached to it. Okay, what do you notice? Again, this is probably most valuable if we had um, you know, a cell and interface to compare in the first place. But what do you notice about the nuclear envelope? Dude, it's disappearing. Dude, how do you spell disappear? 
I put two S's, but I don't think there are two S's in disappearing. But it's disappearing. And I think this is really weird. When you think about structures that form boundaries, when they disappear, the edges are gone. So it's almost like, in a weird way, when the nuclear envelope disintegrates, the nucleus is gone. The contents of the nucleus aren't gone, so the DNA is still there, those chromosomes are still there, but the nucleus isn't there anymore. So the chromosomes are out and they're floating around in the cytoplasm. I need to show you somebody else. This little giddy up. We get structures called centrioles. That's the orange thing. They literally look like two little logs that are in like right angles to each other. They're um, cytoskeletal parts. The centrioles, and there's two sets. So there's two centrioles, and they migrate to the poles of the cell. So they, they're moving to the edge or whatever, across from each other, like the North Pole and the South Pole of the cell. They're moving so that they're as far apart from each other as possible in the cell. They have associated with them these little, the little, what do you call these? They look like little spider legs. They have spider legs associated with them called spindle fibers. These are also just pieces of cytoskeleton. And these are important. Ultimately, the centriole and the spindle fibers, so they're all associated together. The spindle fibers are actually going to attach to the centromere of the chromosomes. Now think about that. Like, go ahead and just predict in your brain what, what could be happening here. These centrioles and their spindle fibers move to the poles. And those little spindle fibers are going to grow out and they're going to attach to the central mirror of each chromosome. And so that each chromosome is going to be attached to both sides. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I'm going to just let you think on that. Let's see if there really is anything. Is there anything that's happened here in prometaphase that's different than prophase, it's just farther along in the process. Do you agree with that? It looks like the spindle fibers have grown out. They're starting to maybe even attach to the chromosome. Um, the nuclear envelope is more disappeared. The DNA is all condensed into these logs, these dense logs. I don't think there's anything else that has happened, but those are really, really important things. If I think of more things, we'll add them in. Let's go look at an onion really fast and let's see if we can find some cells that are in prophase. Okay, it's like going Easter egg hunting. I'm not kidding, I get really excited. Does that surprise you? So. I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see the yellowish lines. This is an onion, so we're talking a plant cell, right? And you can see the boxes. The boxes are the cell walls. You can see, um, I'm just gonna write that in here, cell wall. The purple circles, like all around, we see purple circles, do you agree? But they're, they look different from each other, right? Like there's weird stuff going on here. What? These are the nuclei. And actually, the purple is the DNA. Because remember how I was like, dude, the nuclear envelope disappears. 
do you even have a nucleus anymore? I don't know, but I kind of still see circles all over in here. Do you agree that we got like, what? There's so many different things going on here. I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you what the cells in interphase look like. That's going to be important to us, isn't it? So um, I'm going to, huh, I'm going to highlight, I guess. We'll do a highlight of a nucleus in interphase. Here's another one. Here's another one. This one looks like it's probably an interphase. I'm definitely going that one's an interphase. Interphase. Interphase, interphase. I mean, what are most of these cells in? Most of them are in interphase. I'm just going to go ahead and make myself a little note right here that these are interphase. When you're looking at a slide, there are a couple things you can look for. Kind of a smear, like you can't see, like it looks almost smooth purple. You can't see any kind of log. It doesn't look like there's any logs anywhere. And often you can see the nucleolus. I'm gonna circle the nucleolus. If you can see the nucleolus, sometimes there's more than one nucleolus. If you can see the nucleolus, that's a really good sign that you're still in interphase. Attach nucleolus to like kind of, you know, not real um, defined. These are definitely in interphase. This one right here looks like something might be starting to happen. The, do you see how it looks a little different? Like the, the DNA looks different. The nucleus looks different. Interphase is where most things are. And I can't help it. it. It really is like all of these are in interphase. Now, I was just about to click on this one. I'm going to draw a box around it. This is the one I want to look at. I was just about to be like, oh, look at them all in interphase. This one's in interphase. This one's in interphase. You get a car. You get a car. But the one that I put a box around in the middle, what, what is, what's, what about that one? Why did I put a box around it? I'll tell you it's in prophase. In fact, let's put a P on there. What's your clue? I can't, I don't know. I wouldn't use the nucleolus as my clue, as my, you know, it should be gone. But depending on what stage of prophase you're in, it might not be all the way gone yet. But what is definitely happening? The DNA is condensing into chromosome logs. And you can see that because these purple blobs are starting to look like logs. Now, chromosomes, oops, you can't see that. Chromosomes, not in prophase, but you will see what phase that is in. Too organized for prophase. Prophase, here's another prophase. Starting to condense. There's not much organization to the chromosomes yet, but they're definitely starting to condense. Okay, prophase. Here's another prophase. There's actually many of them, but many more in interphase. Okay, how do you feel? Like you can totally identify some of these, and it takes practice. You can do it. After we condense and get rid of our nucleus, we're head and we went through prometaphase, because whatever. Now we're going to go to metaphase. Let's see what happens. Predict. Guess what's going to happen in metaphase.